This is MSJ Chem, and in the next video in topic 7, we'll be looking at Le Chatelier's principle. So here we have Le Chatelier's principle. When a system at equilibrium is subjected to a change, the system will respond to minimize the effect of the change. The changes that we'll be looking at are changes in concentration, pressure, temperature, and the addition of a catalyst. Let's start with changes in concentration. In this reaction, hydrogen reacts with iodine to form hydrogen iodide. So that's the forward reaction. In the reverse reaction, hydrogen iodide decomposes to form iodine and hydrogen. So let's look at the effect of adding hydrogen gas to this system at equilibrium. If we add hydrogen gas to the system at equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift to the right. That's the product side. So by adding hydrogen, the equilibrium shifts to the right to use up the added hydrogen. If we make changes in concentration, then the value of Kc does not change. Next, we'll have a look at the effect of adding hydrogen iodide to the system at equilibrium. So by adding hydrogen iodide, the equilibrium will shift to the left to use up the added hydrogen iodide. And once again, by making changes in concentration, the value of Kc doesn't change. Next, we'll have a look at changes in pressure. This is for reactions where all the species are in the gaseous state. Here we have the equation for the Haber process, in which nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia in the forward reaction, and in the reverse reaction, ammonia decomposes to form hydrogen and nitrogen. If changes are made to a system where all the species are present in the gaseous state, then we have to take into account the number of moles of gas in the reactants and the products. On the reactant side, we have four moles of gas. In the product side, we have two moles of gas. So that means on the reactant side, we have more gaseous molecules, and on the product side, we have less gaseous molecules. Let's have a look at the effect of increasing the pressure to this system at equilibrium. When pressure is increased, the equilibrium will shift to the right because there are fewer gaseous molecules on the product side, which lowers the pressure of the system. And the final point, by changing the pressure of the system, the value of Kc does not change. In some questions, you may be asked to predict the effect on the yield of the products. If the equilibrium shifts to the right, then the yield of the ammonia will increase. Let's have a look at one more example of a change in pressure. If pressure is decreased, the equilibrium will shift to the left because there are more gaseous molecules on the reactant side, which increases the pressure of the system. Once again, the value of Kc does not change and the yield of ammonia decreases. Let's finish with a summary. So we have the change to the system at equilibrium, the change in the position of equilibrium, and the change in the value of Kc. So let's start with increased concentration of reactants. The equilibrium will shift to the right. If we increase the concentration of the products, the equilibrium will shift to the left. If we decrease the concentration of the reactants, the equilibrium will shift to the left. And if we decrease the concentration of the products, the equilibrium will shift to the right. And as you can see, all of these changes have no effect on the value of Kc. Moving on to a change in pressure. An increase in pressure, the equilibrium will shift to the side with fewer gaseous molecules. If we decrease the pressure, the equilibrium will shift to the side with more gaseous molecules. And a change in the pressure with the same number of gaseous molecules in the reactants and the products has no change in the position of equilibrium. And once again, all of these changes have no effect on the value of Kc.